Hey guys, this is Miko here. I'm back with a video that is going to be on Spear. Uh, Spear is a weapon that is not super utilized, but is utilized by a decent amount of top com companies as a one of, particularly, particularly on attack. Uh, on defense, sometimes it's play, but it's like kind of less common because it tends to get less value than other builds. Uh, it's typically slotted in the IGVG slot in a group as either as probably the second one not the primary and the reason why spear is so good like the potential of it and why people have been exploring it is it's the fastest bu alt building build in the game and it's it's perks that you have access to have a lot of util spear is like very flexible in terms of like what you go and like what the tree is like i don't have my exact uh gear on for when i played this spec but there's a few things that we were testing with it uh this is one tree that is like, well, actually, no, this is the PVE tree. I was going a tree that was something, sorry, I'm like putting it back together at the same time. So I'll kind of go into uh, the why spear is good in terms of like theory, and then I'll kind of go into the specifics after that. Um, But in theory, spear is really, really good because it's the fastest building Alt weapon in the game. It's actually faster than Ice Gauntlet. Uh, so the, my tree was something like this. I don't know if this is a, the exact one, but the the base idea. There's like a few different setups with this. So people have been trying it in heavy. People have been trying it in medium. But then there's no one really playing Spear as a light kill squad build. It's put as a a support build with a lot of util basically. So. Every single perk on the on the spear and just inherently is super super strong. Like in EU, Plodge is playing this in OPR and he's playing javelin because javelin can go through like non-interruptible attacks typically, which is a big strength to it. I know some people have been trying out cyclone. Uh, cyclone is really really good at. <laughs> Who is this? Cyclone is really, really good at getting your stamina back. Cyclone is typically played in medium. Uh, it's not... So usually the sweep is like the one that people swap. The the perforate and the skew are fairly constant. So Javelin has, like, in theory, can be very good, especially if you can hit it consistently, but in reality, Javelin's not used as much on point. It's more of an off point sort of spec if, at that point if you're running Spear. Uh, Cyclone is a very on point heavy spec, and then Sweep is a little bit of a mix that can be used in both. The reason why I was using Sweep, uh, Sweep has a, a very, very low cooldown for an effect that is not affected by freedom. So basically, if you land this on top of healers and you have people that are with you, the healer is just dead. If you land this on top of IGBBs or IGBGs, they will die pretty quickly with this. It's just the uh, Great Axe Warhammers, have, when they have Grit, will not be affected by this, but you could still land it at them at, on times. Like, if they go for a Mailstorm, they're going for a Gravwell, you hit them with the Sweep, and then they're knocked down. Uh, there's a tree that is based on heavy attacks that's somewhat played, and there's a tree that's not based off heavy attacks. So I mess this up, because normally I get exploiting weakness with this, but... Uh, so, Coop de Grace... Let me try to figure out the actual tree that I, I used. Sorry, I'll, I'll get the tree figured out here real quick. So, it, a lot of this for the util stuff is based off refreshing, so that's a refreshing perk, I want that. The damage stuff, I'm like, you think about, but you don't necessarily take. So that perk is, this is like the best perk of the spear by far, aggressive maneuvers. It just makes it so that you have insane CDR. And then, like, say I'll, I'll just do something like this, or... It's below, right? Yeah, it's below, so it's not nearly as good. But you want to try to take the perks that, like, kind of influence, like, or that are good for your actual uh, build itself. So this would be, like, a concept of, like, how you could play this. Okay. So in terms of, like, the, the heavy attacks, the reason why heavy attacks are decent on Spear is because of Plague Strikes. I talk about Plague Strikes and I talk about SNS builds. A uh, Plague Strikes works on Spear. There are a few different ways that it works. So you would think it, this would be your heavy attack on a Spear. This is not your only source of a heavy attack. You could do a heavy and a light cancel. So this is a little bit faster. And then this counts as a heavy attack, but it's actually faster than doing this full animation. If you actually look at that. 
Uh, so that will apply the Plague Strikes, but it won't apply Trenchant Rend, which is noteworthy. Sweep, this part here, where you put the Spear in the ground, that will also apply Plague Strikes. So what this means is that it basically turns the weapon to a weapon that can apply tons of debuffs. You could apply Plague Strikes, you could apply Max Rend if you use Perforate, because Perforate on this uh, second perk will have basically 30% Rend guaranteed in the war, since most people are above 50% health. So that's a 30% run that you're applying to people. If you run Enfeebling Skewer, which is very common to run on the weapon, then that's a 43% weaken that you can conditionally apply to people. So say there's a guy going in with Detonate, uh, then you can apply it to him. The counter to that is a lot of these stuff, a lot of this stuff can be easily negated by Quen spots. Uh, but with the popularity of more, not really popularity, but. Uh, with Bile kind of coming around, that kind of helps with that, because Bile, naturally, if you run more of those, takes away the enemy's ability to have constant coin spots, since they have to use it for the Bile itself. But a lot of the, this setup is, like, countered by coin spots. It's really strong in OPR. Like, in OPR, this spec is actually insane, especially if you have a healer with you. Uh, the main reason why people started testing out Spear because, was because the blocking stuff didn't really work, and naturally one of the more tanky Fortify classes is Spear because of Fortify Perforate. Uh, also has really good CDR. I'd say typically if you're going to play this Spear, I built this originally in Heavy. I would probably play it in the Medium. There have been a couple other variants that have gone around that were kind of interesting that were from EU originally. There's a, a variant that people played with the, the rune glass that gave you stamina, and they played it in medium, and they played it with uh, the bleeds on on top of all this. So you put like a great sword in there, or you'd put something that can cause a bleed as a secondary. A great sword made sense at the time because it gives relentless free, freedom to get out of really tight spots, and then you can be really aggressive with it otherwise. And you use those bleeds that would consistently give you ticks, and those ticks would charge your. Uh, your stamina basically up, so then you're basically able to infinitely dodge. That's like one way that this has been played. The more common way it's been played and has felt best so far is people run it with Ice Gauntlet. Uh, big surprise, Ice Gauntlet's good with everything. And they, they run it with Pylon, so they're able to get ult really, really fast. They don't really put any damage in the int, you just play for fully for the spear, but you run it with Ice Pylon because Ice, Ice Gauntlet just has way too good utility for the weapon itself. And they play it as an IGVG that has a little bit worse disease, but the rend is a lot more util, and the enfeebling skewer is very, very strong. It's been used to try to open up gates, is like the the base idea of and that. It's really good outside of Fort, but outside of Fort isn't much of a topic anymore. It's mostly about trying to get through gates. It's it's good at like opening up opportunities in the gate, basically. It's like the, one of the reasons why it's played, too. I wouldn't say it's like a super insane build, but it's like it's up there in terms of being good. Like it's between, I'd say upper B and mid to lower A tier. So, like top of B, lower A tier kind of thing. Uh, there are some point builds I would say that are better than this, but in terms of like being a very good point build that's off meta, I'd say this is a very good one. And VGBB is another very, very good point build that is slightly off of meta. But the, yeah, so it basically Plague Strikes is how I've been building around it. Uh, I do have other spears that I've been, were playing, was playing around with at one point. I ran this one for a while to get ult charge even faster because it had chain. And the Keenly Fortified was kind of nice because you want all the Fortify you can get. Which is why I have it at 625 and I still use this as a PvE util spear, but not all the time. But yeah, uh, so that's like kind of the main idea is you, you want to play for the, the Plague Strikes if you're playing this setup. There are a couple other setups, and I'll go through the, the trees with them real quick, if I can find where Spear is. So this is Plague Strikes. You could change a few of these perks. The big thing is you want to try to get to this, because that's going to increase your damage, although you're not really... I don't play for damage with a lot of these builds. Uh, naturally, I am a kind of a... I build every support build to be more tanky and to have more util, because that's my base play style, but you could build this to have a little bit more damage and a little bit less of this. But I like those like heavy attack things, because each one of those heavy attacks is going to be 15% CDR on top of this 20% CDR, so you basically just go infinite with abilities, and you don't have to put anything in your armor actually into refreshing. Like with this set, if you wanted full best, you would go Brazil, Shirking Fort, and Freedom on everything, and or maybe, I think if you run Hatchet, 
you could drop some of that freedom. You can go elemental aversion because one thing this build suffers from is BBs. Since a lot of your animations tend to be longer, uh, BBs are really able to take advantage of that and hit their shots consistently, and LA aversion could help protect against that. Otherwise, you need to heavily slot into a fire resist. So, yeah, that's kind of the, the base spiel of how you do it, that setup. Uh, this right tree is pretty much always going to be something like this. This perk right here, uh, the crits, is variable. There are a couple others here that are decent. I think the critical attacks have a way to give you CDR somehow. Maybe not. Maybe I'm mixing up my weapons. Yeah, so maybe that's not worth it. But there, there's a couple perks on here that are like kind of interesting. But the base mechanic with Spear that's good is if you're going for the sweep, Plague Strikes is very strong. There's also a thing where some people don't go the final perk on Plague Strikes, so they leave people on the ground for longer. Uh, and, and they'll go something else. But I think the Plague Strike setup is like fairly strong. The other main setup that's popular is the Cyclone setup. If you're going Cyclone, you're probably not going for the Plague Strikes sort of thing. You're going for that like kind of keenly fortified uh, chain. Like you're trying to be more defensive. And you're inherently going to have more damage because you're putting more damage into people. You need to have the Leeching of Cyclone perk, in my opinion, if you're going to play it this way, though. So, you're, you're going to end up with something that looks like this. Probably not the heavy attack. You probably do your final thing on the right tree. I would probably go with that. So, critical hits extend the duration of your spear buffs. I don't think you really play for that a ton, but it's still a good thing to have. And then you would go something like this. The base idea with Cyclone is it's really good if you're like on the point, you use all your stam, you pop the Cyclone, you'll just have all your stam back because it gives you 20 stam per hit. And because your, your cooldown is so low, then you're able to basically go infinite with the amount of dodges you have. You just have to figure out a way to live through all that damage, which the Leeching Cyclone helps. Uh, you really want to be able to get the debuffs off you, so again, Ice Cutlet tends to be very good with it. I've seen some people try Greatsword and have some success as well. Plodge still runs Void Gauntlet, but I think that's a little bit greedier. But you get the idea. Of, like the, the base idea with this is Spear is a really, really good shell because it charges ult faster than Ice Gauntlet because it has so many bleeds, and each one of these attacks like is kind of coded weird, sort of like how Pylon is, where they tend to give you more ult charge than other... because they count as single target attacks, even though they're AoEs. Which is why Pylon tends to be very good, because that Pylon Burst is an AoE that kind of is coded as a single target attack in terms of like how much ult it gives you, so it tends to give more ult charge. But yeah, that's the, the base mechanism of Spear and like why it's played. Uh, it's really fun to play. I would definitely play it in OPR if you haven't tried it at all, and it's not that expensive of a set to build, because all the deck stuff is tends to be cheaper. If you're looking at, like, attributes, I mean, this is going to be all messed up because I'm playing other specs all the time at this point. Uh, I would personally go for, like, around 200 con. The 300 con doesn't affect, like, your duration stuff, actually. So I would go 200 con, uh, 150 dex for sure, and then probably 150 strength, unless you want to get some of these upper echelon dex perks that don't matter as much. So, yeah, I'd probably do 150, 150, 200 if I were to do this. And at that point, it naturally makes sense to go Greatsword, but I think Greatsword and Ice Gauntlet are kind of debatable. The advantage with Greatsword is literally that you can just kind of spin out of clumps. There has been some debate to run this with Warhammer. A lot of people run it with with uh, Stoneform. I think it's a lot better with Greatsword than it is with Warhammer. I think it's also a lot better with Ice Gauntlet than it is with Greatsword, though. Because with when you pop this like Heart Rune, you could charge your next Heart Rune. So you could be in Fortify and charge your next one, and that makes it inherently really good for Spear. Uh, the advantage of Greatsword is the Relentless Freedom. You can get out of any clump that you want to with just a press of a button. And then if you're Ice Gauntlet, uh, you're, you'll be able to live for a long period of time, but you won't really be able to get out unless you position at the edge of clumps. So at that point, you're positioning very similar to a VG, and it's very similar to a VG IG roll. So, yeah, uh, I'd definitely try it. If I were to build this again, which I'm probably not going to build this set again until, until like, the nerfs happen and I'm confident that Spear could be played over Greatsword in some circumstances more, then uh, I would build it in medium. It tends to be better in medium. I like it in heavy because there's a lot of long animations that I play on the point, and 
BBs tend to blow you up in this build, so you have to like ward heavily against them, like more than normal. So just be wary of that. But it's a really fun build. It's a very underrated build, and it could be decent as a one or two of in a war. And let me know what you guys think, and I'll see you guys in the next video.